this topic, you will learn how to define payment terms. Now, the payment terms function allows you the flexibility to define the payment conditions used in all submodule financial transactions for both customers and suppliers. This information is transferred to the documents, including orders and invoices, in sales, purchasing, accounts payable, and accounts receivable, and can be modified if needed in each document. Now, the payment terms are automatically linked in invoice selection, making it possible to initialize the payment of the invoice as long as it's not validated. At validation of the invoice, the payment due becomes completely independent of the payment terms linked originally and is modifiable. A payment condition is composed of one or more lines with each line corresponding to an open item calculation rule and payment method. As a result, for a given invoice, multi-term open items can be identified or can be defined. Now, the flexibility of the payment terms allows you to select the number of days for your due date. Excluding days of the week, you can also select specific days of the week and exclude holidays. Let's now take a look at how to define payment parameters. You decided that you wanted to set up a default payment terms for net 30, 30 day due date, but the customer wanted to be able to pay on the 15th of the month. To do this, you go to common data, you go to the BP's tables and the permit payment terms function. Here you can see in the left list, there are payment terms that are created. Now to create a brand new payment term, so we click new, enter in the payment terms ID. As you can see, it's, it is required, of course. You can do it, set it up by legislation. If no legislation is there, it would be for all legislations. You can see a description and short description are required. The group allows you to create the payment terms according to a specific company. In this case, we don't need that. Now, to create the net 30, the first thing we do is select the payment method. And we're selecting by check. Now, the next box here is the SEPA. Now, this allows you to set it up for the Eurozone payment types or direct debit or Europe-wide direct debit system. If you select a payment method, that's an SEPA, it automatically checks the box there and also automatically checks the management, SDD management box for this type of payment. For our case, we'll go ahead and move forward. We'll select 100% is due on the due date as well as 100% sales tax is due as well. Going on to our payment type, you can see it's open item. You have additional selections if you decide to make payment terms that are associated with prepayment or payment retention. Now we can also select the month saying we want to go a month out or several months out, but this is days. So we're going to select the 30 days, use a day field and enter in 30 days. You can start your counting currently from today's date or in the month in field, you can select, well, we want to start 30 days at the end of the next month or the end of the current month. You can see how flexible the system can be. Now, what we wanted was 30 days, but due on the 15th. That's what you use the day fields for. This is day one. This would be day two, day three. So you enter in on day one we say, well, it's gonna be on the 15th of the month, but I can also select another day, meaning I can say, well, it's due on the 15th and then enter say, or due on the 20th, whichever comes first. That's what the days are used for. You can also have a minimum amount that's paid on the due date as well. If you use the minimum amount due and it's not met, you can also in the management section have an alternate payment terms if the amount is under a certain amount of money. As you can see, the field up here also allows you to select the type of currency you're going to receive. 
Okay, so now we have set this up for net 30, due on the 15th, and then we create. You can also test it by using a simu simulation. The simulation adds a $1,000 default amount in the field here, sets the due date basis and your terms down below. As you can see, the due date would be on the 15th. Why? Because June 23rd, 30 days would not make it to the 15th, so it pushes it to the next 15th. So as you can see, our net 30, it actually works the way it was designed. Now before we go to where this you would actually set this up at, or you would actually assign the payment terms, let's take a look at some of the other features, including the exclusion days section allows you to exclude days as well as exclude holidays by the holidays checkbox. And you can also set the due date by the statement due date as well. Now where would we assign the terms? Well, this is for a customer. So we go to the customer BPs block and the customer, the financials tab, and it's assigned the payment terms field here. You can also set alternate days here with the payment days for any customer. I could have also set this the payment terms on a customer category, allowing me to have the payment terms be a default for multiple customers. It can also be used for suppliers by going to the supplier function, also the financials tab, and the payment section here. And we mentioned being able to modify it on any line, not only in sales, but purchasing, but also APAR. Let's go to APAR accounting and just take a look at one of the places where you would actually see the terms. We'll go to invoicing and customer BP invoicing. On a customer BP, you can see the payment terms box here, allowing you to modify it is, if necessary, also modify the due date by basis as well. You can do this on AP, you can do this in sales invoicing as well as purchase invoicing. Now you know how to define payment terms and you can see the flexibility to be able to modify them at the document level.